Two Moon Junction. This movie has two moons, all right. And neither of them is the one orbiting our planet. Hi, friends. Two Moon Junction was the last film for two well-known celebrities as an early role for one who later became famous and has a slew of quality character actors. This movie stars the beautiful Sherilyn Fenn from Twin Peaks and The Wraith. Fenn plays April, a debutante of a rich upper-class southern family who is soon to be married to a rich douche bro from another similar upper crust family. He looks like Donny Osmond, but he's not. April is kind of repressed and secretly, she's not sure the marriage is what she wants, but it's what's expected of her, so it's what she has to do. Then the carnival comes to town, and one of the workers at the carnival is a hot, handsome hunk. They notice each other, and the die is cast. This hunk awakens April's hidden desires. Then the hunk shows up at her mansion, when conveniently, no one is home, and convinces her to have makeouts. Launching April on her search to come to terms with her naughty desires, so she can blossom as a sexual being, find freedom, and become... A woman. Or something like that. Over the course of the movie, they have several makeout sessions. Oh, whoa, whoa! I can show that on YouTube. That is definitely in the movie. Several times. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, uh, anyway. Meanwhile, the family matriarch arranges for the local law to keep tabs on the carny hunk and get him to leave town. And even more, meanwhile, there are more makeouts. But that's it. So far as the story goes, there's not much else here to talk about, honestly. April doesn't know what she wants. Will she ride off into the sunset with the carny? Or... Marry the douche bro like she's supposed to. One problem here is that you can never relate to these spoiled rich people. Not the girl, not the douche bro fiance, not the matriarch, none of them. And the carny hunk isn't much of a prize either. There isn't much about him to like, really. There is a girl named Patty. She apparently works at the carnival. She's pretty interesting, but sadly has very little to do and leaves the movie far too early. Now the cast here is interesting. An almost unrecognizable Dabs Greer appears as an old carnival worker, a longtime character actor in movies and TV. You may remember him best as the Reverend Alden from Little House on the Prairie. We also have Christy McNichol as the aforementioned Patty, the girl at the carnival. Juanita Moore is here. She starred in many movies and shows, most notably her Oscar-winning turn in 1959's Imitation of Life. Don Galloway is a small part as April's father. He was a regular on Ironside and General Hospital. The mom is played by Millie Perkins, who debuted as the title character in The Diary of Anne Frank, and appeared in many other productions, including playing Elvis's mom in that 1990 Elvis TV series. That was a good show. Yeah. Sadly, this was the last film for both Hervé Velasquez, Tattoo from Fantasy Island, as well as the legendary Burl Eye. Kinda too bad they went out on this one. However, the movie was also the debut of this future star. There she is. See her? That's right. Mila Jojovich, who later went on to star in The Fifth Element. Multipass! <laughs> We, we also have Louise Fletcher as the matriarch. Now, 
Louise Fletcher specialized in playing a certain kind of character. The kind of character that is not only tough, dangerous, and conniving, but infuriatingly insufferable as well. And she excelled at playing that kind of character, most notably as the nurse in One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, and again as Kai Wynn on Deep Space Nine. She brings a bit of that to her character here. Even so, with all that experience in the cast, in the final analysis, this movie was kind of tedious to get through. The only real draw here is the makeout sessions, but even then, there's a sort of sameness to them. Maybe these two just aren't very imaginative, I don't know. And April always cries at the end of every makeout, and you never know why. Is she embarrassed? Ashamed? Crying tears of joy? Or what? To Finn's credit, at the time, she wanted to take on a role that was outside her comfort level. But instead of jump-starting her career in movies, Two Moon Junction became an embarrassment when the picture was razzed by critics and audiences alike. Cheryl and Finn in the All Together, I give 200,000 paws up. Uh, the movie itself is only like a paw and a half. Yeah, it isn't very good. It just never hits home the way the filmmakers intended, and despite Fenn's obvious charms, it's still not enough to save this picture. And that's saying something. Two Moon Junction is available on VHS and DVD, and presently, anyway, only available on Blu-ray and digitally outside the United States. So I'll be back soon with another video and a better movie. In the meantime, you take care of yourselves, okay? And I'll see you in the next one. Uh, I'm gonna rewatch Two Moon Junction, you know, frame by frame. Uh, uh,